Welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We are looking at international trade. And if you remember from the last presentation, we've made the small country assumption. That is, that our home country is a price taker on the world market. It simply takes the world price of anything it wants to buy, i.e. imports, as given, and it takes the price of anything it wants to sell, exports, as given. In our last presentation, we looked at the case of something that we want to export from Australia, and that was liquefied petroleum gas. In this example, let's look at something we want to import. So we're going to have the quantity of cars down on the horizontal axis, and we're going to have the price of cars on the vertical axis. Our initial equilibrium, where domestic supply intersects domestic demand, is going to be at P0 and Q0. That is our equilibrium in the absence of trade or in autarky. Let's suppose that the world price at which Australia can buy cars is down here at PW. That price is going to be below our autarky price of P0. And my claim is that if Australia opens up to trade in cars, then the domestic price is going to fall to PW. At that lower price, consumers will want to buy QD cars. They're going to be buying more cars than before. Producers at this lower price, however, will only want to sell QS cars. They'll be wanting to sell less cars than before. How is the difference made up? The gap between the amount of cars that Australia wants to buy and the amount of cars that Australia wants to sell? Well, that gap is simply going to be the amount of cars that Australia imports. To see this, let's think what the supply curve to Australia for cars now looks like. Notice that if the price is down here, less than PW, there's still some supply to Australia, but it's purely the domestic supply. Domestic suppliers would still be happy to sell some cars, but we can't import any cars because the world price is PW. If the price is less than PW, no one overseas will sell us a car. But if the price goes up to PW, well, at that price of PW, we can buy as many cars as we'd like from overseas. That's our price taker assumption. So the supply curve for Australia, the supply curve of cars, now follows the domestic supply curve until we hit the world price, but then at the world price it now becomes horizontal because we can buy as many cars as we like at the world price. So this solid green line is our total supply curve to Australia. Where's the equilibrium? Well, where domestic demand hits total supply to Australia at a price of PW and a quantity of QD. But what about for sellers? What's the demand curve that sellers face? Well, let's start off by considering a price above PW, like the old equilibrium price under autarky of P0. At that price now, demand is, well, zero. Why? Well, because with international trade, consumers are able to buy as many cars as they like at PW. No consumer is going to pay the higher price of P0. So demand, as seen by sellers, at the price P0 is zero. And in fact, that holds for every price above PW. But what happens when they hit PW? Well, at that price, at PW, the demand curve is horizontal. Domestic cars can be sold instead of imported cars, or vice versa. So domestic demand is horizontal until we hit the domestic demand curve. At a lower price, of course, domestic demand will be even higher than it is at PW. So the demand curve faced by sellers now is horizontal at the world price. They can't sell any cars above the world price. But at the world price, it is horizontal until it hits domestic demand and then it follows the domestic demand curve down. Where's our new equilibrium? Well, where the domestic supply curve hits the new demand curve 
at a price of PW and a quantity of QS. So our new equilibrium is buyers and sellers in Australia will pay and receive PW for cars. That's going to be lower than the autarky price. The number of cars that Australian manufacturers will produce and sell will be QS. That's less than the amount in autarky. The number of cars that Australian consumers will buy will be QD. That's more than the amount in autarky. And the gap between QD and QS is going to be our level of imports of cars. Now, most students don't have trouble with the idea that domestic consumers will only pay PW. After all, why will any domestic consumer pay more than the world price? They can buy as many cars as they like at the world price. But it's not quite as obvious why domestic producers have to drop their price down to the world price. Why can't domestic producers still receive, say, the original price, P0? Well, let's think about that for the moment. If domestic producers still tried to sell cars at P0, they would like to sell Q0 cars, but how many cars would they be able to sell? Well, uh, unfortunately, they'd be able to sell absolutely no cars. So there'd be an excess supply at P0 given by Q0. What happens if there's an excess supply? That puts downward pressure on the price. That downward pressure will continue until domestic sellers can actually sell some cars. And that's going to only occur at a price of PW. So opening up to international trade for an import where the world price is less than our autarky price, if that will make consumers better off because they get to buy more cars at a lower price, but it will make domestic producers worse off. They face a lower price. Unsurprisingly, domestic producers won't like this very much. And so domestic producers will try and get the government to interfere with trade, for example, by taxing imports, that's called a tariff, or by subsidising the domestic car industry. They'll try and do that so that they can make more profit. And until very recently, that's been the case in Australia. Australia still, in 2014, has tariffs on cars, but only in the last six months has the government finally refused to subsidise the domestic producers who really just want a higher price so that they can make more money. The domestic consumers in Australia, as a result, will be better off by the international trade. But in the case of Australia, it's quite likely that our domestic producers will cease to operate. Thanks for listening. We'll continue on with more about international trade next time.